Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, just something short and quick, uh, nothing to do with retro stuff, a bit off topic I guess. Um, but it is electronics based. Um, I just thought I'd show you one of these PIR sensors. <clears throat> I've got them in my conservatory here. I've got them all around the house actually. I've got them made sure I've got one in every room. Um, I extended my alarm configuration a few years back myself and wired in sensors all over the place. So um, it's a bit like Fort Knox, but um, that's besides the point. Uh, th this sensor seem to stop working. You sort of move, um, you know, you move your hand in front of it pretty close and the sensor was not working. Now, there's something, something I usually do sort of once every six months is check, go around and check all my sensors. Um, most alarm systems, you can put it in a walk, what they call a walk test mode, and you can go around and, the, 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 you know, the, it'll sound, it'll make some sort of sounding noise or something as each sensor goes off so you can test them at different positions in the room and stuff you know as you enter the room and exit the room just to make sure they do actually work and this one had stopped working um, there's not much to show you but I thought I'll just show you while I'm here anyway because I've not uploaded that many videos recently I've got quite a few to edit and some of them will probably go up around the same time as this one um, but nothing substantial um, I think it's the sensor I think um, I think it's an expiry date if you look on the back there can you see uh, EXP 0805 um, I don't know whether the, the, the UV um, sensor here, it's not really UV is it, the, the, it's a passive, is it passive IR, I think it is, but I don't know whether these deteriorate with, over time, I suspect they do, I mean this has been in um, a room that gets a, an awful lot of direct sunlight, um, the fascia is a little bit yellowed there, uh, now I have cleaned the uh, you know that front piece there and cleaned on the inside, it didn't make a difference, but as you can see I've got this wired up at the moment to a 12 volt power supply, and it's worth just showing you how these things are wired up actually if you you know you want if you never looked at one of these yourself before and you want to try and do something with your own alarm system now bear in mind this is the old type i'm not an alarm expert so i don't know there's probably you know some of these new ones now have got like wi-fi or wireless sensors bluetooth there's all sorts of things um and things have probably moved on but typically these old ones from sort of the 80s and 90s have these six connections here you've got a minus and plus you know so typically 12 volts goes in and there's a 7805 here 78005 so it obviously drops it to five volts for the rest of the the the, the logic and stuff on there and then you've got this nc which stands for normally closed and that's your alarm contacts um, and if i measure see if we can do this just put the meter on continuity um, I shouldn't be doing this on the carpet, but this is bin fodder anyway. If I just measure across there, you can see the LED is lit at the moment. When that LED goes off, let's just cover it over actually with that. Hopefully that'll, that'll be sufficient. You should hear the meter suddenly. There you go. Low resistance. It's like a low impedance. Is it? I'll put it on resistance. See if I can measure the actual resistance. Yeah, 22 ohms. Um, so I put it back on sounder. So I move that across get a bit of light it goes off because open circuit so that's the way it works when the when this is not detecting anything in the room you know a person a heat signature etc or movement um, it will be closed like 22 ohms um, and obviously it goes open circuit there when something goes in front of it and the red light comes on to indicate and then the other thing you've got here is these two tamper connections TT um, and I'll show you that if I just put the meter on continuity and those two pins uh, sorry you can't quite see that can you uh, and I know it's a distance off, uh, there's no point in zooming in, but yeah, so we're on the two T connections there. The meter is on continuity mode, nothing. If I press that little spring there to press the switch down, you can hear it's, uh, it's now working. It's, uh, you know, so there's a short there between those two. And the idea is the lid obviously pushes that spring down uh, there. As you can see, it pushes that little micro switch down. And that's, you know, it's to, the tamper is to detect whether someone's tampering with it, they've taken the face off, etc. Um, so, yeah, that's it really. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, cover this while I was there. Um, so whilst I'm here, I checked out the caps and things on here, and they're all all right. Uh, these little SMD caps. Um, the, the solder on there looks a little bit discoloured, but there's there's no signs of uh, you know leakage or anything. And I do think it's the sensor, because when these are in a room that's exposed to a, a lot of natural light they don't last as long you know that's what kills them effectively it's natural light and temperature change as well you've got hot and cold cycles you know if you've got them in a an outside room or something or a garage or a shed or something like that that will uh, you know shorten the life on these things as well um but yeah so they're pretty easy to swap out these you can get one of these for about seven or eight pounds you know replacement on ebay um 
and if you put punch the engineer code into your alarm uh, typically it will allow you then to remove the fascia off your you know your alarm panel and also take the, the front off these and it shouldn't trigger your alarm if you've not got the engineer code you could be in for trouble because obviously your alarm will go off um, you could in theory do that leave your alarm going off you know swap one over and then put your front fascias back on you know and stuff, stuff and after 20 minutes or whatever the time that is on your alarm it should just be okay so you could do it that way but it's gonna it'd be a bit painful on your ears if you did it that way um, of course the alternative is just get an alarm company and locally um, to do the work for you um, but I tend to always like doing things like this myself um, I'm lucky I do have the engineer code for my alarm um, and in theory you should also isolate the plus and minus at the box you know your alarm box side you know your, your, your panel so that the, these wires have not got plus uh, 12 volts and ground connected whilst you're actually doing the rewiring uh, you could because you'll probably you could, if you shorted them you'd blow the fuse on the panel um, but I, the way I did it I just hot swapped it so you know I took out the plus like this you know took that out off the wall so you know the sensor's still on the wall took the plus out stick a tiny piece of insulation tape on it and then do the same with the next wire the next wire the next wire so I got six wires with insulation tape and very very carefully pull them one by one through the uh, you know the the plastic uh, housing here through the hole and stuff just to make sure they don't short and then reverse the process when you're putting it back together so yeah it's, it's the sort of thing you could do yourself anyway i thought you'd find that interesting thanks for watching i'll see you soon